now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. Well, Jello again, an episode of the Jack Benny Show, actually the Jello Show starring Jack Benny, as it was broadcast 79 years ago, October 10th, 1943, as Jack returns from North Africa. He had been entertaining the troops who were battling there in World War II. Uh, and uh, 79 years ago, October 10th, 1943. Thanks for joining us on this Monday, 10th day of October, 283rd day of 2022. 82 days remaining till we get to 2023. The Great Hurricane of 1780 killed 20 to 30,000 people in the Caribbean. In Annapolis, Maryland, on this date in 1845, the Naval School opened with 50 midshipmen, students, and seven professors. It would later be renamed the U.S. Naval Academy. Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer given a funeral on this date in 1877 with full military honors. President Woodrow Wilson triggered the explosion of the Gamboa Dyke on this date in 1913, thus ending construction on the Panama Canal. Zorro premiering on this date in 1957. Uh, the final network broadcast would be on July 2nd, 1959. 78 episodes produced Guy Williams starring as Zorro. Simon and Garfunkel releasing the album Parsley Sage, Rosemary and Time in 1966. And, of course, one of their big albums. Wasn't at the time, but it would become one. Soul dismantled and moved to the U.S. The London Bridge reopened on this date in 1971 in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. On which it can be preserved just to sell it in its entirety. You wouldn't consider selling it piecemeal then, you know. I understand you may have had some offers for lampposts or balustrades. Yes, we've had several offers from private individuals. Does that mean that the bridge would be dispersed over a wide area and you'd lose its uh, individuality completely? Now, American entrepreneur Robert P. McCullough purchased the bridge, which was outdated and needed to be replaced, the 1831 structure sinking into the River Thames. Now, local politician Ivan Lucan thought because of the notoriety of the bridge, it could be sold. McCullough paid $2.4 million for the bridge and also paid to move it. That was a lot of money in 1971. Still is. Also, a Vice President Spiro Agnew resigned on this date in 1973 after being charged with federal income tax evasion. God does reign. I thank him for the opportunity of serving you in high office. And I know that he will continue to care for this country in the future as he has done so well in the past. The government at Washington does live. It lives in the pages of our Constitution and in the hearts of our citizens. And there it will always be safe. Thank you, good night, and farewell. Spiro Agnew became the first vice president to resign in disgrace. That same day, he pled no contest to a charge of federal income tax evasion exchange for the dropping of the charges of political corruption. He was subsequently fined $10,000, sentenced to three years probation, and disbarred by the Maryland Court of Appeals. Agnew would die in 1996, a worse sentence, leukemia. In 1978, President Carter signed a bill into law that authorized the minting of the Susan B. Anthony dollars. The Pac-Man arcade game released to the Japanese market on this date in 1979. The House voting 296 to 133 in 2002 to give President George W. Bush broad authority to use military force against Iraq. The Senate would follow suit the next day. Connecticut Supreme Court ruled gay couples had a right to marry on this date in 2008. And in 2018, Hurricane Michael made landfall in the Florida panhandle as a catastrophic Category 5 hurricane. 57 people died in the U.S., 45 in Florida, an estimated $25.1 billion in damages. Interestingly enough, it was not a Category 5 hurricane, 
until immediately before landfall. Michael was a real killer. It just wiped out so much in the panhandle of Florida, and our friends in the 850 are still remembered to this date. Passing away on this date in 1964, Eddie Catter. Supposing I gave you the lowdown on uh, Elaine Barry and John Barrymore wedding. Swell, swell. You know, Elaine Barry didn't come out there to marry John Barrymore. No? Came out there to visit another romantic young actor. And when she found out I was married, she just fell right into John Barrymore's arms. That's all there was to it. Broke a heart, yeah. Canter with those big pop eyes, he was just very, very funny. Eddie Canter passing away on this date in 1964. Also passing away on this date, a number of actors including Yul Brynner, Orson Welles, Teresa Graves, Christopher Reeves, Alex Karras, who was a fine football player and actor as well, and country musician Cal Smith. Hello, country bumpkin. Fine song. Uh, Born on this date in history, composer Giuseppe Verde, actress Helen Hayes, pianist Thelonious Monk, and Ed Wood, the filmmaker. Happy birthday number 81 to actor Peter Coyote. You remember him from E.T. and Patch Adams. Actor Ben Vereen is 76 today. Singer David Lee Roth, 68. Country singer Tanya Tucker, 64. Her voice still adorns Ariel the Little Mermaid, Jody Benson, 61, from Saved by the Bell and the TV show Extra, Mario Lopez, 49. Uh, let's see, from Friday Night Lights, Amy Teagarden is 33. And retired racer and, and NASCAR analyst, Dale Earnhardt Jr., 48 years old today. Uh, if, if you can boil anything from Pocono, it's it's uh, turn three, how the car gets through the center of turn three and the exit of that corner is very similar to, to the center and exits of this cor- these corners. Some of the characteristics that the car has and what makes the car work well in turn three at Pocono probably would help here. And uh, so you kind of point Greg or your crew chief in that direction and say, you know, I need I need whatever we could do or whatever we did or hit on in Pocono that might have helped us in turn three. There's some tools I would probably go to first. The racing family of the Earnharts, still well-respected to this date, and the analyst that Dale Earnhardt Jr. has become has been amazing. Dale Earnhardt Jr., 48 years old today. Those some of the people who celebrate the 10th day of October as their birthday, and if this happens to be your birthday... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. And we're going back 79 years to October 10th, 1943, for an episode of the Jell-O program starring Jack Benny, uh, October 10th, 1943, as Jack returns from Africa. I'm Wyatt Cox. Thank you for making us a part of your Monday here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station. You know, it's true. Difficult times have a way of focusing us. We have to think about what matters most when it comes to our spending, our health care. No doubt. This is why so many people are joining MediShare right now. MediShare is a trusted way to save up to 50% on your monthly health care costs. More than 400,000 people have already made the switch. It's pretty obvious why, too, especially now during this challenging season with health care costs and out-of-pocket expenses going up. MediShare can save you a lot of money. The typical family saves $500 a month. And MediShare is a Christian healthcare sharing ministry that's worked beautifully for 29 years. There are different options to choose from to fit your budget. I'll give you the number here in a second. And if you call, you can get a price within two minutes. Maybe now is the perfect time to make the switch and start saving. Here you go. Call 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. 833-34-BIBLE. Bible. Jack Benny was by and large the king of Saturday night. He basically owned that 7 p.m. time slot across the nation. And that's what we're going to hear today. Jack Benny, 
from 79 years ago, October 10th, 1943. And by the way, Jack was just like Bob Hope. He would go overseas to entertain the troops to keep their morale up, and he did a good job of it. From 79 years ago today, October 10th, 1943, Jack Benny on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, coming to you from New York City and starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, as you probably know, Jack Benny has just returned from a camp tour overseas. So we take you back a few days to LaGuardia Airport and show you what happened when Jack arrived. Say, Mary, isn't it crowded here at the airport? It sure is, Don. Gee whiz, Don, just imagine. Jack's been gone three whole months. That's right. I wonder if he's changed. Jeepers, I hope so. <laughs> Gosh, I can hardly wait to see him. Oh, you never can tell, Mary. Maybe a trip like this made a new man out of Jack. Maybe. Maybe he'll have a different outlook on life, not worry about everything the way he used to. Maybe. Maybe he won't be so cheap and tight anymore. Well, it was nice thinking about it anyway. <laughs> Let's see if we can push in a little closer, Don. You see, Blossom, I told you there'd be excitement at the airport. Sure, I think, but why is there such a crowd here? Don't you know? Jack Benny's coming in. Who? Jack Benny. Who? You know the comedian who's been with the soldiers in Africa. Oh, Bob, hope he's so comical. <laughs> No, 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 Jack Benny. He's on the radio Sunday night. For him, they're making such a mishmash. <laughs> With a crowd like this, you'd expect at least Franklin D. Sinatra. <laughs> hey, look, look, look. It's coming in an airplane. Pilot to control tower. Pilot to control tower. Coming in for a landing. Mr. Benny, you can take your head out of my lap now. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Gee, I, I can't believe I'm home. Pilot to control tower. Pilot to control. Oh, is that you, Mert? <laughs> <laughs> well, how's every little thing, Mert? I'll speak to you later. Pilot to control tower. Control tower to pilot. Control tower to pilot. Go ahead. Pilot to control tower. Give landing instructions. Give landing instructions. Sorry, we're not allowed to give out that kind of information. <laughs> oh, boy. New York. Look at that skyline. I'm so nervous. Look. Look, there's the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty. Don't get conceited. She waves at everybody. <laughs> Gosh, it'll, it'll only be a couple of minutes now. All right, folks, this is it. Watch your step getting out of the plane. Well, so long, Cap. It was a wonderful trip. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Hey, look at that beautiful dame. Isn't that Mary Livingston? Yeah, but don't get conceited. She waves at everybody. <laughs> Oh, boy, did I get even with that guy. Hey, Mary! Mary, Don! There he is, Don! Jack! Jack! Right with you, kids! Oh, Mr. Benny, Mr. Benny, may I have your autograph, please? Uh, just a second, ma'am. I want to run over and kiss Mary. Kiss me and give her the autograph. <laughs> That's very sweet, ma'am, but I'll come back and kiss you later. Well, hurry up. I'm in 1A. <laughs> I will. Here I am, Don. Hiya, Don. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Jack, how are you? Well, wait a minute. Give me a kiss first. <laughs> Don, that trip did do him a lot of good. <laughs> why, why, Mary, have I changed? Changed? I haven't been kissed like that since I tripped and fell on a mop. 
<laughs> That's me, a Casanova from Casablanca. <laughs> hey, where's Rochester? He's at the hotel waiting for you. Pardon me, Mr. Benny, but would you please sign my wife's autograph book? Why, certainly, I'll be glad to. What's the name, please? Just put down, to blossom a report from Jack Benny. Uh, how do you spell that? B E N N Y. <laughs> hmm. You see, Iving, when you get intimate with them, they're not so much. <laughs> Look, lady, suppose I just sign it to Blossom from Jack. Sign anything. Stop wasting my time out of there. <laughs> there you are. Hurry, Jack. Don's waiting in the taxi. Here, Here I am, Jack. I got a cab. Right with you. <laughs> Boy, I'll be glad to get to my hotel. Where to, mister? The Acme Plaza. It's uh, way downtown. Oh, Jack, why do you always stay at that joint? Mary, the Acme Plaza is not a joint. Go on, it's the only foxhole I ever saw with a lobby. <laughs> well, I like it. Hey, driver, will you please hurry to the hotel? I've been on a long trip and I want to take a bath. Don't worry, bud. I'll get you there so fast you'll be first in line. <laughs> okay, step on it. Well, tell me, Jack, don't you feel tired and worn out after that long trip? Oh, a little, Don, but it was worth it. Gosh, the places I've been and the people I've met. Sit back, Don. Here it comes. Hmm. You know, I'll never forget what happened to me in North Africa. You see, Larry Adler was with me and Winnie Shaw and Anna Lee. And we... Say, hey, uh, you're Jack Benny, aren't you? Well, yes, yes, driver, I am. Well, anyway, kids, Larry and I and the girls were at a certain camp in North Africa. It was very quiet. And all of a sudden, about 12 o'clock... Say, night... Mr. Benny, I got a brother in the army in North Africa. Name's Crowley, Joe Crowley. Did you run into him there? Crowley? No, no, I didn't. Well, anyway, down it was midnight. See, and there was a full moon, see? And, of course, no one ever thought that... Funny, Joe's the kind of a guy you'd pick out any place. <laughs> well, look, I'm sorry, driver, but I didn't see him. So, Mary, get this. Here it was midnight, you see, and nobody... Was Cracks around. his knuckles a lot. Funny you didn't hear him. <laughs> Look, driver, I traveled 32,000 miles. I was all over North Africa. I met thousands and thousands of soldiers. But Joe's a corporal. <laughs> well, I'm sorry I didn't see him. Now, let's see, where was I? It was midnight and Joe was a corporal. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, anyway, it was midnight. There wasn't a breath of air stirring. When all of a sudden... Here we are, the Acme Plaza. This is it, Don. The good old Acme Plaza. Where? Right down those stairs. <laughs> yep, that's it. I'll take care of the cab. Here you are, driver. Uh, 75 piastres. That's Egyptian money. Piastres? They're no good here. Oh, yes. Well, Don, you take care of it, will you? I've only got piastres. <laughs> Holy smoke. Now we're in for six months of this. Mary, I'll get a change at the bank tomorrow. Don't worry. Well, so long, Mr. Penny. I'm sorry it didn't meet my brother, Corporal Crowley. Yes, yes, so am I. Jack, look who's waiting for you. Where? Walls! 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 Rochester! <laughs> Rochester, am I glad to see you. I'm glad to see you too, boss. Doggone, look at you. You got fat. Well, you put on a little weight yourself. You must have gained 20 pounds. I ain't worried. You'll take it off me. <laughs> no, no, this year things are going to be different. But no kidding, Rochester. We're both carrying around a little excess baggage. I'm carrying mine, boss. You're dragging yours. <laughs> Oh, it doesn't look that bad. Well, come on, kids. Let's go in the hotel. Watch your step. That first one down is the lily. Welcome to Inner Sanctum. <laughs> well, the same old clerk. Hello, Mr. Leroy. Hello, Mr. Benny. Glad to see you home again. Did you have a nice trip? Oh, wonderful. By the way, Mr. Leroy, have I got my same room? No, I moved you up to the ground floor, the penthouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's swell Yeah, now you won't have to come in through the grating <laughs> Yeah, it's nice of you, Mr. Leroy Here's the key to your room, Mr. Benny 
Thank you. And here's the other key. <laughs> oh, yes. You remember, I always like to lock my clothes closet. Well, come on, kids. You know, Mary, I can't wait to tell you what happened that night in North Africa. It was midnight, and there was a full moon. Not a breath of air was stirring, and everything was quiet. When all of a sudden... I flat forgot, because this show is in the middle of World War II, that uh, Jell-O was not sponsoring the show. You know, General Foods was still sponsoring the show, but uh, Jell-O was uh, hard to get a hold of because of sugar rationing. And uh, because of that sugar rationing, uh, they made the show uh, the Great Nuts Flakes Program. Uh, Great Nuts and Great Nuts Flakes program, and uh, that was part of the reason why uh, it, 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 Jello you couldn't get it because you couldn't get sugar. Uh, rationing a big part of World War II, as you hear us talk about here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Okay, uh, October 10th, 1943, the Jack Benny program. Uh, and we will have the news from uh, 79 years ago and the conclusion of the Jack Benny program. But first, these important words from your favorite radio station. Hang on. Thanks for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. You're listening to an episode of the Jack Benny Program, the Great Nuts and Great Nuts Flakes Program, as it was originally broadcast on Sunday, October 10th, 1943, in the newspapers of that Sunday 79 years ago. These were some of the headlines. A mighty fortress of American flying fortresses and liberators and perhaps their biggest raid of the war made what was officially described early today as their deepest penetration into Germany to blast remote Nazi industrial targets uh, and shoot down 91 enemy fighters. Declaring that good bombing results were reported, the Army communique announced the record operation was carried out with a loss of 29 U.S. bombers. The unescorted bombers fought to many aerial combats with the enemy Thunderbolts, which provided withdrawal support were unopposed. The Army's three bridgeheads, which by this week may have become three lances aimed at the heart of Hitler's Europe, will have great political importance as well as military prominence when Russia and her Western allies begin talking post-war settlement at the Foreign Minister's Conference in the Kremlin. Even had the Russians not been installed when the conference began, their political position vis-a-vis the West would have been strong. If, when it begins, the Red Army is threatening to burst through to the borders of Hitler's Europe, with all the possibilities such a breakthrough would have been, the the Soviet political position would be almost unassailable. Reports reaching Sweden last night said the Germans intend to evacuate the Baltic states by October 31st as the invasion jittery Nazis acknowledge that American and British air armadas control the skies over much of Europe and Germany and that naval supremacy in the Mediterranean permits the Allies to strike anywhere in the Balkans. John Colburn, writing for Associated Press, says Germany heavy, German heavy guns and troops already are being withdrawn east of Leningrad, and some evacuation of troops from the Petrov district began last week. In the Pacific, outnumbered U.S. warships have inflicted a humiliating defeat on Japan's navy in the central Solomons, and the enemy's 19-month hold on two strategic islands there has been smashed. An imperial headquarters communique broadcast by Dommel News Agency admitted both Columbangra and Velanabra Islands have been given up. The broadcast, reported by o, the Office of War Information, said troops have been removed almost without enemy interference. Mrs. Franklin D. Roosevelt will observe her 59th birthday, some 50,000 miles more travel, acquainting, acquainted with thousands more people in three foreign countries, including tribesmen in New Zealand, and about 25 pounds thinner than she was a year ago. 
as usual, she will pass the day quietly at Hyde Park. There is small likelihood that any of her four fighting sons or her daughter will be with her. In entering her 60th year, Mrs. Roosevelt will leave behind the most arduous 12 months during which she developed from a continent coverer to a globe trotter. A shift in the wind yesterday aided hundreds of volunteer firefighters seeking to control the worst forest fires in Michigan's Upper Peninsula since 1936. The American Transit Association, which represents local transportation systems throughout the nation, explains the gargantuan task confronting the industry. American bus, streetcar, and rapid transit lines currently carrying passengers at a rate of almost double the amount hauled in 1934, but with slightly less than the total equipment capacity they had then. An epitaph at a graveyard in Ipswich, Massachusetts. My name is Pat Boyle. I'm dead, tis true. Who was I? What was I? What's that to you? And though some of the day's top news stories is reported in the newspapers of Sunday, October 10th, 1943, on your radio, Jack Benny. The conclusion next on this Monday, Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite station. Robert Young in a starring role on Tuesday's Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, an episode of Father Knows Best from 71 years ago, October 11th, 1951. Father has a secret. And so does mother. And we'll find out what those secrets are tomorrow. But right now, the conclusion of the Jack Benny program, or the Great Nuts and Great Nuts Flakes program, from 79 years ago, October 10th, 1943. Well, anyway, Mary, to make a long story short, that's how it happened. Can you imagine her mistaking me for Eisenhower? (laughs) I mean, imagine. I'll try. Hmm. Well, anyway... You want me to try too, boss? (laughs) No, Rochester, just finish unpacking my bag. Anyway, Don... It was such a thrill meeting everybody that you've ever read about. All those important generals. Well, I could just sit here and talk for days. Oh, uh, it must have been exciting. But tell me, Jack, how was Eisenhower to talk to? What sort of a fella is he? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, Don, he's one general that I didn't get to meet. You see, the two days that I was in Algiers, Eisenhower happened to be in Sicily. You see? Then what about General Doolittle? Did you meet him? No. <laughs> You see, Mary, by the time I got to Sicily, Doolittle had gone to Casablanca. But General Patton was in Sicily. General General Patton? Patton? Yes, he was in Palermo the same time I was. What a swell guy. Old blood and guts. (laughs) I really was a thrill sitting in his office. Then you met General Patton. No, he had just left for Messina. (laughs) You see, he went went from Palermo to Messina. Well, what about General Clark? He went from Natchez to Mobile. He did not. He was in Italy when I did a show there two weeks ago. In fact, he would have come to see it if he hadn't been so busy. Oh, then you didn't meet General Clark. He didn't even meet Corporal Crowley. (laughs) Mary, now that's enough about me. Hey, how's everything at Rome? Roger, at home, I mean, Rochester. (laughs) I can't get out of Italy. Rochester, how's our border, Mr. Billingsley? Boss, you're sure going to have to get rid of him. That man's getting crazier every day. Why? What happened now? Well, when you were in the Middle East, Mr. Billingsley wrote you a letter. Well, what's crazy about that? Instead of mailing it, he put the letter in his pocket, stuck a stamp on his nose, and shoved his head in the mailbox. (laughs) Oh. He told me he would have gone female, but he don't photograph well. (laughs) Oh, Rochester, he's just a little eccentric, that's all. (laughs) Ha, ha. Imagine mailing him, himself to me as a letter. That ain't the end of it. He shoved me in his filing cabinet and said he wanted to keep a carbon copy. <laughs> well, don't worry about it, Rochester. Say, Mary, how come you never answered any of those letters I wrote you? Letters? What are you talking about? I never even got a postcard. I didn't either. Well, how do you like that? I wrote two or three times a week. I can't understand it. Did you send him airmail? 
No. Well, Dan, did you send them regular mail by boat? No. Don't tell me you gave them to Eleanor as she passed by. <laughs> Mrs. Roosevelt went to Australia. Here's what I did, Mary. You see, there's a current in the Mediterranean that goes into the Gulf Stream, which flows around the tip of Florida and then northward to New York. So? Well, I wrote the letters, put them in bottles, threw them into the Mediterranean, and I can't understand what held them up. <laughs> well, I'll be... I can't... Rochester, where are you going? Back in the filing cabinet. Billingsley's okay. <laughs> you come here. Now, Mary, that might sound ridiculous to you, but if you could only see... Come in! <laughs> now, Mary, if you could only... Hey, Phil! Hiya, Jackson. What do you hear from the pyramid? Well, I'm okay. Bill, am I happy to see you. Gee, you look swell. I feel like a million bucks, Jackson. I feel like a million bucks myself. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Morgan, though, is going to change that to piastres. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Hey, Jackson, I sure wish I could have gone with you on that trip. Say, uh, did you get to meet General Montgomery? Did I? No. <laughs> Mary, I only missed Patton by 45 minutes. Good old blood and guts. Really. <laughs> well, tell me something, Jackson. Where'd you go? I mean, uh, what countries were you in? Oh, I was in Egypt, Palestine, Sicily, Persia. That's now called Iran. You know, Persia's called Iran. Let's see, where else? Hey, that reminds me, Jackson. You know, I tried to phone you when you were in Iran. Phone me? Yeah, I put in a Persian to Persian call. <laughs> oh, Harris, you're a fool, you boy. <laughs> I tell Alice the kid about this. The kid'll punch you right in the nose. <laughs> but say, fellas, I brought you all some wonderful presents. I'll give them to you later. And listen to this. What do you think I have coming in by both? Corporal Crowley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop with Corporal Crowley. Well, then what is it, Jackson? A camel. No kidding, fellas. A real live camel. He's being shipped to Hollywood. For heaven's sake, Jack, what do you want with a camel? Why, they're marvelous animals. They can work for you. You can ride them. They don't eat much. And you know, fellas. A camel can go eight days without a drink. Chum, that takes willpower. <laughs> Bill, I'm talking about water. Eight days without water. Well, I can do that. <laughs> I know, Phil, you've got a lot of talent. But incidentally, <laughs> kids... <laughs> incidentally, kids, when I was in Libya... Uh, come in! Uh, when I was in Libya... Hello, everybody. Dana! Oh, How are you, anyway? Thanks. How's Mary? <laughs> oh, she's... Here she is, right here. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Miss Livingston. Hmm. Boy, I just had a big dinner. Am I full? You are, eh? Yeah. Say, how is everybody? Oh, I'm swell, Dennis. Never felt better in my life. Yes, sir. Well, what'd you do this summer, kid? Oh, I managed to keep busy helping out and everything. Well, did you go anywhere this summer, Mr. Benny? <laughs> well, I'll be... Dennis, I was all over Africa doing shows. Oh, vaudeville. <laughs> yeah, that's where it went. Say, Dennis, you're living in this hotel, aren't you? Yeah, and it's sure nice here. They gave me a swell room with an adjoining. <laughs> an, adjoin an adjoining what? I don't know. I can't get the door open. <laughs> well, why don't you go upstairs and complain to the desk clerk? <laughs> anyway, Dennis, uh, tell me something about yourself. I haven't seen you in three months. Well, I have a surprise for you, Mr. Benny. I might get married. Married? Why, Dennis, I am surprised. How will you two live on what Mr. Benny pays you? Oh, she earns twice as much as I do. She's a sergeant. <laughs> You're doing all right. Gee, I'm so nervous about getting married, I don't know what to do. Well, maybe I can help, Dennis. Does your girl need a trousseau? Oh, she's got one already. Full field equipment and a 30-pound pack. 
Well, kids, I waited long enough. I'm going to give you your presents Well, now. Jack, before you do, there's one more question that I want to ask you about your trip. Uh, you know, about the soldiers overseas. The soldiers? What, uh, what is it, Don? Well, uh, well... <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ask me. No, no. Never mind. I'll ask you later. Oh, Mary, leave the room a moment, will you, please? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Should I go, too? <laughs> no, no, Dennis. You can stay. Hot diggity. <laughs> go ahead, Don. What is it about the soldiers? Uh, well, uh, do they eat grape nuts and grape nuts flakes over there? Mary, you can come back now. <laughs> In answer to your question, Don, yes. Every well-stocked oasis has them. You know? Well, I- I'm glad they do because grape nuts and grape nuts flakes uh-huh. both have a sweet as a nut, malty rich flavor. Dennis! <laughs> no use waiting. I got to have a talk with that kid. <laughs> Well, when you do, Jack, be sure to tell him that Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes brings you that one distinctive flavor in two delicious forms. I certainly will. Dennis, see me later and bring some sugar and cream, will you? Anyway, kids, I started to say I'm going to give you your presents now. Rochester, have you got all the gifts unpacked? I got them right here, boss. Say, what's this bag of sand? Is that from the Sahara? Yes, that's for Miss Livingston. It's an hourglass, but the glass broke. You know? <laughs> Now I don't know what to do with the sand. Oh, just get me a pail and shovel. I'll play in it. <laughs> oh, quiet. Rochester, there's a present for you there, too, right at the bottom. I hope the glass didn't break on that one. <laughs> Rochester, it's nothing to drink. It's a fez. A fez. Now, Dennis... A fez? What's that? It's a red silk hat with a tassel. Oh, boss, calm down. <laughs> You'll like it. Now, Dennis. Yes, please? Uh, Dennis, your, uh, your gift is coming by boat. Thanks. That's just what I've always wanted. <laughs> you don't even know what it is. Now, Don. Yes, Jack? Uh, your present is also coming by boat. Yeah, the new writers couldn't think of a gag here. <laughs> Mary, will you please stop? Say, Mr. Benny, if you went overseas, why didn't you write me a letter? Dennis, he wrote us all letters. Wait till I tell you why we didn't get them. Mary, forget about that, will you? He put the letters in bottles and threw them into the ocean. Oh, that's silly. Isn't it, Miss Livingston? (laughs) (laughs) Silly? It's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Come in. Mary, it's not ridiculous. Rochester, see who's at the door. Okay. (laughs) Imagine using the Mediterranean as a mailbox. I'll never get over that. Mary, I don't want to hear any more about it. Oh, boss, boss. What is it, Rochester? There's a swordfish here with a special delivery for Miss Livingston. <laughs> you see, you see, I told you, Mary. I know what I'm doing every day of the week. What are you talking about? Friends, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Now, don't tell a soul, but uh, I like to eat. I like things that taste good. So when I say grape nuts and grape nuts flakes are grand eating, I'm not kidding. They have a real zesty flavor. Nothing namby-pamby about them. That grape nuts flavor is moldy, rich, and just as sweet as a nut. A grand two-grain blend of sun-ripened wheat and malted barley. Grape nuts brings you this luscious flavor in crisp, crunchy kernels. Grape Nuts Flakes brings you the same rich goodness and toasty brown flake form. And both are basic seven foods. For both Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes provide whole grain nourishment. And such cereals are featured in Uncle Sam's Basic Seven Nutrition Program. So when you treat your family to Grape Nuts or Grape Nuts Flakes at breakfast, you're doing them a double favor. Giving them a dish that tastes like a million and providing them with real all-around nourishment. So how about it? Better get some tomorrow. Grape nuts and grape nuts flakes are thrifty, plentiful, not rationed. 
So you see, kids, there's not much more I can tell you about the trip. Got a lot of boys over there doing a swell job, and they're going to stay till it's finished. But naturally, they, they want to get home, you know. Well, I can, I can understand that, Jack. So listen, kids, the thing to do is just because a third war bond drive is over, let's not slow down, that's all. Keep buying them. Keep buying bonds. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as this is the opening of a new season, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my new writer. Corporal Crowley. Oh, keep still. <laughs> Good night, folks. Corporal Crowley. Make a note, your favorite dramatic program, Those We Love, has changed time. It now comes to you early Sunday afternoon over most of these same stations. Look it up in your local newspaper. That's Those We Love. October 10th, 1943, the Jack Benny program here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. We thank you so much for making us a part of your day. Would you please thank this radio station and support their advertisers? It's their kindness and courtesy that allow us to be with you each and every time we roll around here on a Monday on this favorite station of yours. Now, if you miss a day, you don't have to miss a show. All of our shows are available on demand at ClassicRadio.Stream. That's ClassicRadio.Stream. Stream our shows on demand. Learn more about Classic Radio Collecting. You can contact me there. You can find uh, places that you can download our shows so you can have them forever and ever. Amen. Uh, you can also uh, find our social media links there. So you can be in touch with us that way. And you can also buy me a copy. Yesterday, we aired an episode of uh, Casey Crime Photographer. And we've got more great shows coming up that our folks who have contributed to our Buy Me a Coffee Fund at ClassicRadio.Stream have helped us acquire. That's at ClassicRadio.Stream. ClassicRadio.Stream. And please, tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station. 